welcome guys to our channel and thank you very much for your continued support support from wherever you're watching i was just going through the analytics and i realized that we have majority of viewers from the uk thank you very much if you're working from uk salute santeni sana we have been asking president huru kenyatta a question whether he should take part in his succession politics or step back and see how things unfold. And I listened to Martha Karua during his, her live interview in Citizen TV. Martha Karua is of the opinion that President Uru Kenyatta, even though he has his legal right as a voter and as a leader in this country, but he needs to play a passive role, but not more of an active role in politics. President Uhuru Kenyatta's choice to play an active role is what is now brewing the tension between him and William Ruto. And I want to pause there and ask, the verbal exchange between Uhuru and Ruto, is it tension or just attention seeking? Can you ask yourself that question? But before we just crucify Uhuru Kenyatta for trying to say or endorse a leader that he wants, this evening um, I was just strolling and I was just reading an article from, I think it was from the New York, New York Times. For me, I like New York Times. And it was trying to document on the way in the United States of America the issue of presidents or incumbents campaigning for their device or campaigning playing an active role in politics is been there. In Kenya, we have given the wrong example. We've given example of the 2002 and I've believed that Nani tried, that Moi tried to endorse Uhuru Kenyatta and it failed terribly. Now that was the first one. And you will be told that state projects don't work. Moi played an active role. In 2012, Moi Kibaki also played a role, but Moi Kibaki played a passive role. The choice or the decision to choose Uhuru Kenyatta as a deputy prime minister and also a minister for finance, was strategic to groom Uhuru Kenyatta for the job that was coming ahead. Unlike in 2002 when Moi played an active role, in 2012 the person who was more on the ground was actually the late John Michuki. So the people who are saying that Kibaki did not manage his succession, I think he went to the bank, that is wrong. The objective of this video, I am telling you how William Ruto is secretly pushing for a handshake with Uhuru Kenyatta, either post or pre-August general election. Guys, if you're watching this video and you've not yet subscribed, kindly take a second and subscribe. I promise you that this is going to be a very brief video because I just want us to get to some few points where how this is going to be happen. <coughs> Sorry. So let me take you to US. In 1998, there was a president called Reagan and his deputy was George W. Bush. And when they were just leaving the office, when they were just almost, Reagan endorsed George W. Bush when they were having um, a fundraiser, a black tie fundraiser, actually he attended the fundraiser for his vice president to buy and endorse George W. Bush, even though he did it in a, I think I was reading the article, he said he, mis, he mi, mispronounced the name of W. Bush and pronounced Rush. But he endorsed and George W. Bush went and won that seat. And they have been, they were working with the government with him. Even though in 1992, 
he did not lose, he did not win. Now let's go to the 1992. Bill Clinton was with his deputy Al Gore and they traversed the whole U.S. campaigning. They got power and were in government for eight years until the year 2000. Then something interesting happened. The last, in his last year, I think from 1988, Bill Clinton realized that his deputy was never in conversation with him, was not talking to him, was not giving him a call, and they were not, the chemistry was not there. Then Bill Clinton was disturbed because he actually knew that his deputy vice president who was going to seek the presidency will go to him to seek advice. But then in 1999 June, when Al Gore announced that he was going to vie after getting the ticket, he did a live interview later at ABC News, I think. And when he was asked why he fell out with the president, he mentioned and said, first by that time, the issue of the Iraq, the president uh, Bill Clinton popularity had gone down because of unemployment and the issue of Iraq. So when his vice president was asked why he fell out with, with, with Bill Clinton, he said, there was an intern who used to work at White House, known as Monica Lewinsky. And the vice president had an affair with that intern. And just because of that, at some point, I don't know what happened, something happened, and that's when he fell out with the president. And just because of that, they were never seeing each other eye to eye. What am I saying, guys? But sometimes we might be treated to a public outburst, and a personal, a public outburst, but it is just an outcome, an outcome of a personal rebuff. I wish I repeat that. We can be treated to a personal, a, a public outburst, but it is just a result of a personal rebuff. No one knows what exactly happened between Uhuru and Ruto. And I don't want you to get me wrong. Don't use the pol politics of a direct proportionality here to try to say that maybe whatever happened, whatever I was saying in the US is what's happening here. I was only using that example to tell you, one, president can campaign for his deputy and he can win. Two, they can always fall out and it can be personal. So it's upon you to judge and ask, do you think it's personal? Let's go to how I'm telling you that William Root is going to get what he needs. Just from that, you can make your understanding. You can judge Uhuru whether Uhuru should campaign or should not. But guys, this is what I think. This public outburst between Uhuru and Ruto, it is bringing tension. And the tension is the push by William Ruto to get attention. And the attention he needs is this. William Ruto has been in government for eight years. Whatever is happening within Azimio and state house operatives, William Ruto has people within state house who support him. That's why when you hear Atuoli in Mombasa was saying that people within state house do, did not give him chance to speak in Mombasa, you can understand. There are people within state house that support William Ruto. So I want to believe that one, William Ruto might have realized that Uhuru Kenyatta is going to make sure that Raila is the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya by all means. And he already knows that he does not stand a chance. So the only thing he can do is to make sure that he brews the tension between him and the president. They carry the bar high. So even before general election, you will now hear the churches and some groups now coming out to say that before we go to election, there needs to be a handshake between Uhuru and Raila for us to have a peaceful election. That is one. And that is why I'm saying 
in the event that that happens, the, the loser is going to be Raila Odinga. Because as of what I'm seeing now, I think Musail Mudavadi is trading his guns towards Raila. Then William Ruto is taking on Uhuru Kenyatta. What is happening now is that the tension will go, it will sink, it will polarize, and if it polarizes the ground, there will be call for the handshake. And that is what William Ruto wants. Secondly, another condition and something that also William Ruto is doing strategically to push for that handshake is lay ground to reject the results. You know, when you hear them talking in rallies that maybe the deep state is determined to steal their votes, you see like our votes will not be stolen. What that, that chest thumping, that only tells you that deep down, William Ruto feels like some underhand deals might be done. And if he lays that ground, it becomes vivid that he is now ready and he's willing now to, he's going now to reject the results. Then he can actually reject the results even before elections. Or after elections, he rejects the results. Then there is going to be a handshake between him and William Ruto. And, and Uhuru Kenyatta. So that is the second scenario that that handshake is going to happen. Thirdly, William Ruto might actually be caught from the polls. That is his last chest, last card on the chest. And this can happen this way. If ICC case goes on, and of course I'll do another critical analysis on ICC case. Guys, I have an update. Of course I'll do. Someone should remind me if I forget happen daily. If ICC cases continue and they become a thorny issue in William Ruto's campaigns, he might consider, okay, let me boycott. Or he might also see that there are signs that is not going, you know, he's been complaining that the government wants to rig for Raila Odinga, the political party's bill is being passed in favor of Raila. So if all this culminate to a big decision to bolt out, what Raila did after the August 8th general election 2017, then even for us to have election and for us to have a peaceful election, there must be a handshake with the Huru Kenyatta. Lastly, is his campaigns of polarizing and regional zoning. If the ground is more polarized and President Huru Kenyatta has the intelligence, is the ground becomes more polarized? divided on the hustler and the dynasty and more, there might be a call for us to get a common ground. And the 2022 election must be and will be decided before the voting day. Because as I told you guys, the, the election is, between, is, never, is no longer Ruto Raila. It is Ruto Uhuru. People feel like Uhuru wants to remain in power through Raila. And so guys, my own analysis here, I'm saying that there is going to be a handshake between Ruto and Uhuru. And Ruto is laying the trap. And Uhuru is going to fall into that trap. Whatever Uhuru says, Ruto will, will respond with anger. Whatever Ruto says, Uhuru will respond with anger. And now he has realized that Uhuru is very bitter and has now come out to respond. He's now playing it. And that is why Martha Karua said in Citizen TV that not any other statement you must respond. Guys, what do you think? Thank you very much for listening to this.